Hello there, Michael Trends of YouTube. <clears throat> With this power supply that I had from the scrapyard, I have built a box on the top, a project box, and removed the potentiometer which was just down there, where the LED used to be as well. A little tiny, uh, little tiny pot that was just down there, and uh, desoldered it and added some LED wires and some wires for the potentiometer and took it through the inside through the bottom of there and into the bottom of this project box where I have used this this is an old project box which used to be used for something else as you can see there's a hole there and uh, put a 10 turn 1k pot in there because that's what was down there and a nice green LED to show the power status and a couple of easier instead of um, Constantly always having to screw wires in down here. You see, there's, there's still some extra ones there which you're able you can, you're able to connect to, but it's a lot easier to connect to these banana um, plug f uh, females for banana plugs, and you're able to of course put um, ringlet connectors on there as well, which makes things a lot easier than having to constantly have wires hanging out the bottom just there and being having to screw wires on so find it a lot easier and with the power as well there I'm thinking of putting in a kettle plug somewhere on the side sort of somewhere where I can find some room um, I can't at the back because there's a load, there's a, there's a load of um, diode uh, looking transistors on the back of there so uh, I'm unable to use the back part um, so so yeah, it's uh, it's a lot easier to uh, change the voltage of the output with this ten turn. It's a lot more precise. This is actually screwed onto the bottom of this there, there as well. It's quite thick and some good um, high amperage cable in just there. All good. Do I see it working? Of course you do. I've got it working on RGBT here, which is screwed down to a nice heat sink. Got another one there to use as well, which is screwed down to the heat sink. Uh, there's the controller, the gate controller, and there's a pulse width 555 timer circuit just in there, and a motor. So let's let's give it a whirl, shall we? Let's just turn that down. Turn the voltage down. how smooth that is Cold. <laughs> I love that, that's awesome that is. But that power supply is so much better now. Not easier to control the voltage and have it, instead of having to Constantly stick a screwdriver in there into the potentiometer and adjust the net. But a 10 turn is a lot more precise, accurate, and a hell of a lot easier to uh, adjust the voltage now. So I have a variable voltage, a variable voltage power supply. That's 10 amps. Awesome. <laughs> have to try uh, fly back on there next. There. Uh, but uh, yeah, the uh, the bigger one I've got there isn't uh, adjustable, 
so I'm thinking about sticking a small box on the front or on the side of it with the wires like that so I can have, you know, so I can connect the wires to it a lot easier because that is a pain in the arse having to keep reconnecting wires like that so I have to find some sort of switches I can switch to switch in between to because um, you can add these together you see which up, low, up ups the amps so uh, I can just have some switches to switch in between so uh, that's the next project which I do like that so I thought to share that with you guys that's what I've been doing uh, hope you like this video and John high voltage projects yeah, it's a good idea for yourself there, mate, to do yourself when you, when I, uh, you know, when eventually you come and collect this. And one of those. That's what friends do, you see. Give stuff to each other. <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Look after yourselves. Be safe. And we'll speak again.